how much people value culture and um, and how much people want culture. They're kind of sort of slightly shifting and they're not quite the same thing. So, and I think it's going to be one of the big tensions over the next 10 years, particularly as funding cuts kick in more, uh, is do, you know, do we stand up for ourselves and say this is valuable and it's worth it, or do we maybe look at what we're doing and say why isn't it valuable? Because often it's the case that because just nobody wants it. There does seem to be a general consensus, like a concern about what it means to be an artist in this day and age and whether or not is actually a helpful term to call yourself an artist whether that inhibits or actually helps you progress. Mm -hmm. I think we're developing as a nation and more and more people are getting an opportunity to experience culture in, in forms that perhaps they, they wouldn't have beforehand. There are more opportunities now to talk to your audience. Social media has allowed us to have conversations that would have been impossible otherwise and as a result there is much more harmony between what you want to create as an artist. You know, these are all people who have really not sacrificed what they wanted to do in terms of their dreams and that's really important when you're working in emergent forms. The, the kind of terms of reference if you like, I found it really exciting because it was, to some extent there was topics there that are out of my comfort zone but as far as I'm concerned that's, for me that's quite exciting because it means I'm going to learn something, I'm going to get something from it. So I'm kind of intrigued to see what's happening today and seeing how people are immersed in it and using it and using it very comfortably as a format, you know, in terms of the art. The interest for me is the discussion of economy um, and the arts and what's been refreshing for today's uh, conference in the morning has been that people are discussing the idea of making money, becoming sustainable, to allow them to do what they really want rather than what they have to do to us. We were talking about zombies and we were talking about uh, city experiences and I think it was sort of a play, creating a place where these discussions could happen, take place. It is a very healthy discussion, the discussion of business in uh, the arts and it's a discussion that people are afraid of a real mystery. I think it was one of those wonderful things where you go in not really knowing. I knew it wouldn't be ordinary, I knew it wouldn't be a standard conference. There were enough kind of clues there about um, gorillas and silly ideas and, um, and speed dating and doing things differently that I had absolutely no idea what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be something a little bit different. We very rapidly got to meet a few people and there's a nice combination, I think, of yeah, practitioners, students, academics, um, people who run development agencies as well as so the, sort of the funders and the funded um, as well as people who work much more in the private sector so it's it's been quite an interesting mix but it is quite a kind of a, a youthful quite energetic group of people who are sort of here to play and I think some of the the kind of prompts to play that are in the, in the studio whether it be a, a big foot or a pineapple car just kind of give people that subtle cue that perhaps this is something you can you can take a more playful approach to than the kind of conference basically works predominantly with the public Challenge of the challenge of participation and the challenge and the challenge of actually um, somebody messing around with the work. <laughs> you know that the kind of like the co the co creation of, of storytelling. And I don't know if it'd be interesting to hear. You know they have a word for it. It's called transmedia. You know in my world it would be called media art or digital work. Or and there's a whole different language I think there coming round to explain um, those different forms of cinema that are split across film industry, new media, yeah, theatre. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, today we had the foot and the pineapple and with the sweet smell of success we are a big corporation called Bioorganism and Substrate Industries. We sponsor all sorts of events such as this and we harvest stories of success and once we know where there's enough a conglomeration of a high density of success levels then we go there with a laboratory. 
Now, for any uh, major zombie heads, I appreciate that Frankenstein isn't actually a zombie. Okay, I know that. Technically speaking, he's not a zombie. What this makes me think of is that in the 21st century, now that we have technologies which allow us to make, make something powerful and you can make it, uh, you can distribute it to millions of people. It doesn't have to be something that you stand in front of in an institution for 20 minutes to make things which are meaningful and beautiful. Then art, as far as we knew it, as far as I'm concerned, is dead. Gone. No longer exists. So then my question to you is, where were you when art died? would you even define the arts? I wouldn't consider myself an artist if I hadn't started. And more and more people are getting an opportunity to experience culture in, in forms that perhaps they, they wouldn't have beforehand. The thing is, I'm not a massive fan of the zombie genre per se, but it's such an accessible genre. Such, they, they come on board, they trade one day of chasing people through the city for one day of actually playing it. Zombies taking part in the event, doing selfies. Your is, patrons can engage with your product and actually create your advertising for you. Embrace that flexibility and being able to tell stories set maybe within the same universe or stories of themes and allow people to interact with them in their preferred medium. We meet characters on blogs, uh, Twitter, through his notebook, through audio stories, emails, text messages with the audience to sell ticket. It's one of the projects that we've been working on um, in, in the UK, in Brazil, in East Asia, which we call Playable City. City is kind of our response to this narrative of smart cities. Thinking about efficiencies, thinking about the most friction-free way we can architecture our cities to get from A to B quicker or better or somehow kind of smooth out the lines of our lives. And we hold in, an interest in the fact that that may be not the only way to live. It's not maybe the best way to live. In how we can enable people to transform their cities in ways that maybe aren't that smart, but maybe more about play and playfulness. Through the streets by zombies, or being accompanied through your, the pool of light by the shadow of someone who walked there before you. This, this is possible, and it's everywhere, and it's up to us to do it. Thank you. There's no difference between what's happening in someone's screen and as someone walks down the high street. And what's getting more and more fascinating is how our public spaces are becoming privately owned. And that's the bit where I start to question and I get scared to a certain extent in how this, how this works. So what I'm trying to find out and question is where does that responsibility role lie and how can we police it and how can we change it and how can we have some sort of control of it? So each project has three partners. There's a technology partner, there's a research partner and there's the organisation with the arts project. Now, What I've been involved in predominantly is curating networks of partnerships that produce programmes that output innovation in terms of business models over a long period of time.